Hello there. All right. So today we're going to learn um, this thing called quadrant rule. Um, this is mainly on chapter eight on the Edexcel syllabus, core two Edexcel syllabus. You get this um, with the other exam boards as well, OCR and AQA. They all um, have a chapter on this on in the core two um, core two books. Um, the quadrant rule, well, it's basically used to figure out angles. Um, the sine, cos, and the tan ratios of angles actually. Um, so far, you've dealt with sine, tan, and cos, where you've only used them for um, angles that are between 0 to 90. Maybe in chapter 2, where you had the sine rule and the cos rule, maybe you encountered angles which are up to 180. Um, so now you're going to work out the sine, tan, cos ratios of angles which are, well, 0 to 360 any angles between 0 to 360 or even beyond so you could work out sine 540 and things like that um, you could also work out the um, sine tan cos ratios of angles which are below 0 so you could have the sine of negative 30 or the cos of negative 40 all right so to work out all these ratios the quadrant rule um, really helps you okay um, people do rely on other rules um, other ways of working these ratios out I mean you could rely on the graphs um, you would learn later on how you would use graphs to work out like um, what the ratio of an angle is so if I said work out the ratio of sine 285 which would be somewhere like here so you would read it off the graph okay um, that is also possible but the quadrant rule actually makes the job easier so 285 would have been somewhere here um, so you would have used the quadrant rule to work out the sine eight sine to eight five ratio. All right, so let's make a start. Okay, let me um, um let me just get rid of these. Um, I've run out of control Z's. I'll just go down the page. Okay, let's make a start. Um, right. Um, let's do a quick recap on what sine, tan, and cos are. All right. So let me draw a right angle triangle. Um. A call this my right angle so I'll choose this angle here so therefore this becomes my opposite this becomes my hypotenuse and this becomes my adjacent all right so sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse and cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse and tan theta um, is equal to opposite over adjacent all right so let's um, remember those okay um, now we'll get down to doing the um, quadrant rules all right um, I'll draw a I've got to use a lighter pen for this because I've got to draw lots of things in a very small space um, all right okay now let me draw this right same right angle here and this time I'll just put some values to that right angle um, I'll call this side 4 I'll call this side 3 I'll call this side 5 alright so that's indeed the right angle triangle um, if you square each other's sides and you do the Pythagoras rule it will all match up okay um, so let's work out the sine tan and cos ratios for this angle here right we don't know what that angle is it doesn't really matter um, so I'll say sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse which is 4 by 5 cos theta which is opposite no adjacent over hypotenuse 3 by 5 and tan theta which is opposite over adjacent so therefore that's 4 by 3 all right so these are the sine cos tan ratios and notice um, there's no difference in sign they're all positive all right um, okay now the reason why they're positive is because of this now if you go along this direction on the x-axis you're going along the positive x-axis aren't you if you're going along this way you're going along the positive y-axis all right so when I said sine theta it's opposite over adjacent opposite over hypotenuse opposite side is 4 but it's positive 4 because you're going up on the positive side positive y direction all right now the diagonal here is always considered to be a positive okay diagonal is always a positive 
So 4 by 5, four, positive 4 divided by positive 5 is still positive. The uh, result is still positive, all right? Um, cos theta again, positive 3, positive x direction, divided by positive 5, still a positive result, all right? So that's why any angle between 0 to 90, when you work out the sine, cos, or tan, you always get a positive ratio, all right? Now let's look at an angle in the second quadrant, all right? So I'll draw a right angle like this. And I'll try and make it the same dimensions. I know I've drawn it a bit bigger, but I'll still call it 5. I'll still call it 4, and I'll still call it call it 3 all right so this is the second quadrant this is the first quadrant so let me just put a mark there that's the first quadrant this is the second quadrant all right all right so if you have an angle there and that angle probably is, is going to be the same isn't it because the same um, triangle I've just um, it's just a million inch on the other side here right so when you're going up it's in the positive X positive Y when you're going sideways it's either it's on the X axis on the x direction so it's either positive x or negative x so because you moved this way to the left it's negative 3 all right so therefore again let me work out my sine cos and tan and like I said before the diagonal is always positive all right so the opposite side is 4 and the uh, hypotenuse is 5 so that's 4 by 5 and cos theta the opposite side is no it's adjacent over hypotenuse the adjacent side is minus 3 and the hypotenuse is 5 and tan theta is opposite of adjacent which is 4 divided by minus 3 so these results will be negative whereas this result will be positive that's why in second quadrant they say I mean few of you who have made a head start on this would say oh on the first quadrant you put a big A saying that all um, all trigonometric identities no all um, all these functions trigonometric functions are positive so you put a big A there whereas on the second quadrant you put an S saying that it's only the sign that is positive alright because positive 4 because you're going up and this diagonal is always positive and gave you a positive result whereas the other two gave you a negative result so it's A for the first quadrant S for the second quadrant. Okay, now let's look at the third quadrant. All right, third quadrant. Um, again, I'm going to draw the same triangle here with the same dimensions. Okay, the diagonal is going to be still five, but that angle theta won't be won't, won't change because I've drawn the triangle with the same same dimensions. All right, but still theta. Okay, let's do sine cos and tan for this angle in this quadrant here. So that's a third quadrant, okay? So that's the third quadrant. Let's do sine, cos, and tan, okay? Now this is what you get, all right? So this side here is actually a minus four because you're going down in the in the negative y direction. This is in the negative x direction, and the diagonal is always positive. So sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse minus four divided by five. So that result is always going to be negative cos is adjacent to hypotenuse so it's minus 3 divided by 5 that result is going to be negative as well whereas tan though it's a negative 4 divided by negative 3 opposite divided by adjacent that's going to give you a positive result now that's why in the third quadrant they say tan is positive all right so in the third quadrant you have a t all right because it's only tan that is positive all right now let me fill out the signs for the the second quadrant as well okay I've gone ahead and done the fourth quadrant um, ratios so again I've drawn the same triangle in the fourth quadrant and this time when you go down it's negative but when you go this way to the right it's positive so that results in only the cause having the positive ratio whereas the other two having the negative ratio all right so that's why in the fourth quadrant you put a C Alright, so if I were to summarize this, in the first quadrant, you have all trigonometric functions having positive results. In the second quadrant, you have only the sine having a positive result. In the third, it's tan. In the fourth, it's cos. Alright, so let me write that out separately here. Okay, now this is why, if you've noticed some of your friends 
doing this this is why they do it so in the first quadrant all functions are positive all right and um, the first uh, second third fourth these are positive all